So because you're watching this, I think it's safe to assume you've had the question, maybe you currently have this question, are your hormones making it harder? And are they even hindering your fitness goals? Now, we can't just ignore our hormones. It's not that they're a part of the equation. In reality, they are the equation. Our hormones control how we feel, how we function, how we respond to food, stress, sleep, and even our training sessions. You can be doing everything right. On paper, you can be hitting your macros to a T, you can be completely adherent, you can be busting your ass in your training sessions, but if your hormones are imbalanced, you can very much fall into this trap where scale weight won't budge. Or worse, it actually starts pushing back. Hormones are chemical messengers. They decide how efficiently we burn fat, how well we can build muscle, how well we can recover from these training sessions. Essentially, from the top down, they dictate whether or not we are comfortable in our body and whether or not we can respond to external stressors. Now, if you ignore them, you end up just fighting your body every step of the way. Whereas if you tune into them and you support an environment where they can be harmonious with one another, you can actually get them to work for you, not against you. Now, this isn't about chasing perfection. It's about alignment. It's about balance because when your hormones are balanced, your body is not going to feel so much like a mystery. You're not going to be second guessing every single symptom and truly having to white knuckle your next fat loss phase. Now, fundamentally, hormones are your body's primary messaging system. They tell you when to wake up, when to chill out, when to hold on to body fat, when to burn it, when to build muscle, and even when to go to sleep. Now, if they're out of sync, everything can feel off. So this includes mood, cravings, libido, hunger signaling, even performance. Now, this is going to be a quick introduction to six big hormones that play an essential role in your ability to both burn fat and build muscle. Number one, we have estrogen. Estrogen plays a critical role in modulating your menstrual cycle. It plays a role in your mood, in your energy levels, in bone health. It can actually help you respond to insulin better. And it's also very cardioprotective, neuroprotective, and renal protective. Now, whether it is too low or too high, things can feel pretty chaotic. And yes, this applies to both sexes. Estrogen dominance or estrogen suppression can manifest as PMS, bloating, fatigue, low libido, and poor sexual function. Now, estrogen's influence is widespread, and I want you to think about it almost like a master key, given that there are estrogen receptors across several types of tissues. When levels drop or fluctuate or are imbalanced relative to other hormones we're going to talk about today, you often see ripple effects across several systems. Now, number two, progesterone. Now, progesterone doesn't oftentimes get the same spotlight that estrogen does, but it plays a crucial role in how we feel day to day. If estrogen is a builder, I would think of progesterone more as a balancer. Now in the nervous system, progesterone has calming mood stabilizing effects. It interacts with GABA receptors in the brain, the same ones that are targeted by anti-anxiety medications. And that's why healthy progesterone levels are linked to better sleep, lower anxiety, and an overall just better mood. When it drops, like in the luteal phase or in perimenopause, many women report feeling irritable, anxious, and even experience insomnia. Now in the reproductive system, progesterone preps the uterus for potential pregnancy. It also prevents estrogen from overstimulating uterine lining. It's like a counterweight, and without it, estrogen can be pretty dominant and lead to things like heavy periods and excessive endometrial thickening. It doesn't just support fertility. It keeps all of our systems in check and has somewhat like a balancing effect. Now, number three, testosterone. Now in both sexes, testosterone plays a critical role in libido, energy, muscle mass, bone strength, and cognitive function. Now, even though women produce way less testosterone than men do, when these levels dip, trust me, you can feel it. Now in the brain, testosterone is tied to motivation, assertiveness, and focus. Now testosterone also supports dopamine activity, which influences drive and reward. So when it's low, you can feel like that mental edge is dulled or your get up and go just isn't there. Now metabolically, testosterone helps with insulin sensitivity as well as determining where and when fat is stored. Now low levels can make fat loss that much more difficult specifically around the midsection. So while it doesn't take center stage like estrogen or progesterone relative to the menstrual cycle, it's kind of like this quiet powerhouse, but it is crucial for both men and women to have adequate testosterone levels. Now, number four, cortisol. This is your body's main stress hormone. 
And no, it's not the villain that it's often made out to be. Now at healthy levels, cortisol actually helps regulate your blood sugar, inflammation, and your sleep-wake cycle. Cortisol is literally what gets you out of bed and it helps you respond to life's demands. Now the issue isn't cortisol in itself. It comes from it being too high for too long or swinging too low from burnout. Chronically elevated cortisol can leave you wired but also exhausted. It can leave you anxious and it can make it that much harder to get rid of that stubborn fat, specifically around the midsection. So on the flip side, when cortisol is too low, you might feel kind of flatlined. So no energy, low motivation, brain fog, maybe even that tired but wired sensation at night. Now cortisol doesn't operate in a vacuum. It is constantly responding to your environment, including sleep, mood, stressors, how you feel yourself, and whether or not you're giving yourself adequate rest. It also has a tight feedback loop with other hormones, such as insulin, thyroid hormone, and sex hormones, which is why stress can ripple into just about everything from your cycle to your metabolism. Now, the goal isn't to eliminate cortisol. It's to keep it working for you, not against you. A steady rhythm, higher in the morning, lower at night, is a sign that your body's stress response is calibrated and balanced. Now, insulin is like a key. It helps shuttle blood sugar from your bloodstream into your cells so you can then use it for energy. Now, when it's working well for you, blood sugar stays stable, energy is pretty steady, and you're able to build muscle or burn fat more efficiently. Now, when insulin signaling starts to go off, typically from poor sleep, chronic stress, or low energy availability, your cells stop responding as well. Now this is called insulin resistance. Your body starts pumping out more insulin to compensate. Now this can lead to energy crashes, cravings, even stubborn fat. And eventually this can turn into prediabetes. Now the good news is insulin is incredibly responsive to lifestyle. Dialing in your meals and moving consistently can all improve insulin sensitivity. It's less about avoiding carbs altogether and more about giving your body the appropriate amount in which it can handle. Now number six, thyroid hormone. And when I'm talking about thyroid hormone, I'm specifically referring to TSH, T4, and T3. These hormones work synergistically like your body's metabolic thermostat. They regulate how fast or slow things run, including energy production, your menstrual cycle, digestion, and even mood. So TSH stands for thyroid stimulating hormone. It is the signal sent from your brain to your thyroid. If your body senses you don't have enough circulating thyroid hormone, TSH goes up asking for more. If there's plenty, TSH comes down. So you can kind of think of TSH more so as a messenger rather than a hormone. It gives you a snapshot of how hard your thyroid is working. Now T4, thyroxine, is the main hormone that your thyroid produces. It's kind of like a storage form, plentiful, but not very active. It has to be converted into T3 to actually do the work. Now T3, triiodothyronine, is the active form. This is what enters your cells and it influences everything from energy, digestion, how fast your hair grows, to how warm your hands feel. Now, low T3, even with normal TSH and normal T4, can still leave you feeling very slow, tired, and a lot of brain fog. It can also impact digestion and make you feel kind of cold. It can also have an impact on your ability to continue to lose weight. So here's the twist. The conversion of T4 into T3 predominantly happens outside of the thyroid. We see this occur in the liver, in the gut, and in other specific tissues. So when we look at stress, inflammation, poor gut health, or eating very little food, these are all things that can slow down this conversion of T4 into T3. And even though on paper you might have enough T4, but you very well could still feel hypothyroid if that T3 isn't there. This is why looking at the full picture, not just one marker in isolation, is important in building a comprehensive picture to understand how your thyroid is working. No one hormone works alone. They're constantly talking. And when one is off, the others compensate. Now, hormonal levels are not a one-size-fits-all. What feels good for one person might feel terrible for someone else. Some people thrive when their levels are on the upper end of normal. Now others might feel anxious, edgy, or inflamed at these same levels. And the opposite's true too. What might be low for one person can actually be the sweet spot for someone else. Now if you're heading into a fat loss phase, I would definitely get your levels checked 
prior to beginning. Let's say you're already in a fat loss phase and things aren't responding the way that you were hoping for. Knowing where your hormones stand can help you take a more tailored approach and really ultimately avoid you having to spin your wheels. I gotta think about it like it's checking the dashboard, seeing if you have any lights on before you actually start the trip. If you found this helpful, definitely let me know in the comments below. As always, you guys, thank you so much for tuning in. I will see you in the next one.